Welcome to the David Bradley Show with your host, David Bradley. All right. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm starting off coughing already. So, uh, anyway, I want to humbly apologize to everybody that I haven't had a couple of shows out, but I caught that wonderful Nashville crud. I'm sure everybody can understand that because it's been going around like crazy. Uh, you'll catch me drinking a little bit more, and that's just to help clear my throat a little bit. There was one week I didn't even have a voice, so I'm glad to actually be back in the saddle and doing some stuff. Um, <laughs> and I battled if I wanted to tell you all this story or not, but I'm going to tell you the story. First, I'm going to introduce Miss Alicia Payne. <laughs> <laughs> Long time no see. What's up? What's up? It's like, you know, you said walking up the porch. This is deja vu. This is deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, here you go, guys. This is the story. Alicia came up here last night. I had full crew here. Everything was going great. And uh, we did about an hour and 10 minute long show. We did. And uh, discussed a lot of stuff that I didn't even know. But now I know it. And. I can't act like I don't know it now, but, you know, <laughs> we're going to do it. Uh, <laughs> Caitlin, the girl that's helping me with the producing and everything, she came up and was present for the show. So I had took the boards and moved the boards over to the kitchen island. That way she could stand over there and produce the show. Um, I missed a key element. It was one little cord. And by the time I got done, and Miss Alicia left, I noticed I forgot to hook up the audio cable from the road to the ATM Mini Pro. So all the video that we got was <coughs> just video. There was no audio whatsoever. It was crazy. Yeah. You should have seen me. I was madder than a daggum hornet. <laughs> and Caitlin was apologizing. She's like, I didn't know. I didn't. And she thought I already had everything set up, so she didn't do any pre-checks. Right. So, I mean, it was just one of those things that happened. And I told her, I said, for the most part, I record everything on the T. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to worry about recording this. Right. On the road. Yeah. Because the road would have captured all the audio. Right. Um, and I could have matched it. Yeah. You know, and, and it, it would have took a little bit, but I could have matched it and got it done. And uh, it was just, I didn't, I told her, I said, don't even mess with it because I'm recording everything on this. Right. And the one wire. Whoops. And, and that's every engineer's nightmare. That <laughs> one wire that you forgot to check <laughs> is is what will be your downfall. Yeah. It gets crazy, man. Yeah. Especially when you get you get in a hurry sometimes, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. I do that all the time. <clears throat> well, yeah. We're with, only human. With everything you got going on, yeah. Well, it's crazy. Mm hmm Every day. So anyway, for everybody listening, Miss Alicia helps out and well, actually you're one of the key members of uh the Christmas for kids benefit. Yeah. Yeah, I help out with that. There's a whole crew of us. And, yeah. You know, none of us could um, do it without the next guy or the next girl. We are uh, a good team, and and I'm the chaperone coordinator and the driver coordinator. Cool. For Christmas for Kids. I love it. Yep, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, because actually Tim Thurber actually hooked me and you up. Yeah. And uh, Tim's been doing cr Christmas for Kids forever. Yeah, for many years. Yeah, well, I mean. He's almost as old as me. Yeah. We, we won't talk about how old he is. <laughs> He's a great guy. I like Tim. He's funny. Yeah. That's just the way he is, though. I mean, he's just, uh, he's rambunctious sometimes. Yeah. So anyway, what I want to do is get into the whole history of the Christmas for Kids and um, Basically, talk about everything we talked about last night that didn't okay. get recorded. <laughs> I hope I remember all that. 
I don't know. I mean, you've been doing it forever. I've been doing it forever. Yeah. How long have you been doing it? Well, my first year of doing it um, was 1983, 1984. Mm-hmm. Um, we moved um, to um, the Nashville area from Texas. Right. And my parents were friends with uh, a gentleman by the name of Billy Parks, who was a bus driver for Conway Twitty. And they lived in Hendersonville and Conway and Billy got together and had a discussion about helping the local kids there in the Hendersonville area in Sumner County. Mm -hmm. And um, so the first year they got together and did a few kids and raised some money. I think maybe Conway might have paid for that first year. They didn't have a name or anything. Uh, He might have. Yeah. And then um, the next year they took about 25 kids and gave them $50 a piece. And a lot of the bus driver friends of Billy Parks got involved. And then when we moved here, we were, um, my parents were involved, my dad Mm -hmm. and my mom. So, (coughs) and been involved ever since. Yeah, back then, 50 bucks was a lot of money. It really was. Yeah, 1983. Yeah. Yeah, 1984. Because I used to go out every night, you know, I'd put gas in the car and by whoever I was dating at the time, yeah. you know, buy us something to eat and run around and yeah. have fun all night on, you know, 20, 25 bucks. Yeah. I was going to say $30 back in those days, but I was cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Do what? Buy yeah. Oh. For, for five bags of groceries, 80 oh, bucks. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like it used to be. You got off cheap. The two bags I bought the other night was 38. What is she going to cook us for dinner? Are you cooking dinner? I don't know. What or are you 80, cooking? 80, 80 bucks? Oh. Ooh. Alfredo tortellini. Oh. <coughs> oh, yeah. She's got the beans. Oh, okay. Green beans and ham hock. We're close to the Thanksgiving time. It is. So. It is getting close. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, it's ridiculous. It is. Inflation yeah. drives me nuts, but I don't discuss politics or religion, so no, we're going to leave either. it right there. Yeah, me either, so we'll be great <laughs> friends. I don't get in those discussions. <laughs> I just assume skip that. Yeah, I'm not getting into that. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, uh, was he driver? He was the driver for Conway. Billy Twitty, Parks. Right? Yeah, Billy Parks um, was the driver, and uh, um, Bruce Crawford was also involved in the early years. He was also a driver for... Um, for Conway. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That's awesome. But that was back in the day when the entertainers pretty much owned their own buses. Back yeah, then. Uh, most of them did. Yeah, yeah, most of them did. Now it's a whole lot different. The business is com- almost completely different from where it used to be well, know, yeah. back in those days. But um, most now the artists do not own their own buses. No, I mean, it's, it's more beneficial to lease them. It is. It is. It is. And, you know... You have these bus companies now that help us, and mm-hmm. um, there's lots in the area. And then we have some that are out of state that come and help and donate their buses, and the drivers donate their time, and and um, we couldn't do it without them. I love it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, because I was last year. I just started. <coughs> excuse me. I just started getting the podcast stuff together. Yeah. And I was talking to Tim. Yeah. And Tim was like, you know anything about Christmas for kids? And I was like, no. <laughs> what is it? You know? And he told me. And then he was like, dude, just come down here. Yeah. Come hang out on my bus for a little bit. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'll be down there. And he told me, he said, park off to the side and just come underneath the tape and, and yeah. come on over. Yeah. And uh, I went over and hung out on his bus for a little bit and during the bus show during the bus show yeah um i can't remember her name we talked about this last night i'm bad with names nettles nettles right miss nettles yeah uh yeah miss nettles on his she was a the chaperone artist for that bus yeah and uh met her and talked to her and there was another guy another bus driver i think hopped on the bus for a little bit and was talking to us so 
it was a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, seeing people come on the bus and meet her and, mm-hmm. and talking to her and everything and doing pictures, and yep. it was really neat. Yeah, and she came all that way to, and donated her time also. The, yeah. All the artists that come out on Monday night, um, this year we're going to be having our bus show December the 11th at uh, Walmart in Hendersonville. Mm-hmm. And all of the artists donate their time and come out and hang out on the bus and, and uh, meet the public. You know, the public comes, they pay $5, and they can go and visit all the buses. And we'll have, you know, I, I never know how many buses we are going to have, but we'll have a few. And right. um, most of the buses all have artists on them. And, um, and Christmas lights. And yeah, well, yeah, we gotta have, gotta have Christmas we lights. Gotta have those decorations. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and well, they spend most of Monday. A lot of the guys come out, and a lot of girls and guys, because we have a lot of girl uh, bus drivers too. Mm-hmm. But a lot of them start coming on Sunday night, and um, they'll park, and then get up early Monday morning. Some of them will stay up all night long on Sunday night because that's what they're used to. But yeah. Um, and they'll decorate their buses and get them ready. So, and then the artists usually start coming in a little bit before five and getting comfortable and, you know, spreading right. out. And, and um, then we open doors at five. That'll be awesome. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Well, I like it because, you know, a lot of people don't really understand the whole tour bus and everything else because, I mean, there, there's actually different categories of tour buses. You got the band, you got the crew, you got the star coach, the star. And that's like, well, I can't even think of a hotel room to compare it to. There's not one. That's why I I, I just can't think of one. Because you can go to sleep in your hotel room in Detroit (laughs) 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 and wake up in Nashville the next morning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, me and my third wife, we used to team drive together, and I would go to sleep around Amarillo. Yeah, Amarillo by morning. Mm-hmm. And then I'd wake up uh, somewhere close to the California line, Yeah, and then I'd do the whole California in and out. Yeah. And then we'd swap back. And yeah. I mean, it was, but that freight liner was nowhere near as nice no. as the Star Coach. No, no. You know, you have crew buses that, um, you know, they sleep 12. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, you know, when you have a band that's just starting out, they'll get a crew bus, and then, you know, you can have a, a bed kit put in the back, and uh, or they just take the uh, the bed. The back room has a, a rear lounge, and they yeah. they all have satellite television. And, <clears throat> excuse me, most of the, a lot of the bunks have TVs and DVDs and, and um I mean, it's everything that you could need at the house, but, yeah. but you're rolling, you know. I don't know. It's some, a, some, I, I, some of the star coaches, I think I'd rather just go ahead and make that my house. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, you have every, they're decked out. everything you could possibly need. A lot of them have, you know, kitchens and, you know, refriger- full refrigerator mm-hmm. and a full king-size bed in the back, you know. Yeah. It just depends on, you know, there's a... If you're an artist, you have a need. It can be if if it's not there on the lot, it can be created. Oh yeah, whatever it is that you need. Yeah, because they've actually got. I think it's like. I'm going by memory here, but I think there was like two or three places here in Nashville that actually do the bus build outs and everything there is, else. There is, and there's a few bus companies that actually have their own interior department. So yeah, you know they order a shell or. They have an older shell on the lot, and they just gut it and redo it and update it and build a suit. Build the suit. That's, <laughs> that's exactly what they do. You know, you have an artist that wants to come in and wants the comforts of home, and and this bus almost has everything it needs. Then they're. I wonder if who. I'll <laughs> I don't know if I can answer your question, but I'll try. No, it just, uh, I build a suit and then just something popped in my head. I mean, I'm weird like that. I just, it's the way it goes. <laughs> I'm thinking jacuzzi in the floor. Well, that's been discussed before. I can guarantee you that. As a matter of fact, my um, 
after my dad bought his bus and his plan was to retire, my mom has her favorite bathtub. Mm -hmm. And it has been moved to three different houses when my parents moved. Wow. And when they decided that they were going to retire and um, he was going to put that jacuzzi bathtub <laughs> in that <bus. laughs> And he would have done it. I think he would you have could figured do it. it out. Yeah. You could do it. I mean, it, the hardest thing would be the plumbing, probably. Oh, there's plumbing. Oh, yeah. The hardest part would be getting it through the windshield because you couldn't get it through the door. Mm. Well, that's how they put refrigerators in and everything. Yeah. They have to put it through the windshield. That would be wild. Yeah. It's I've never seen that done, though. No, but. I've never. I, I didn't see it done, but there was a discussion about it. I was a witness. And I've never seen a, um, a bus with a jacuzzi in it. Well, so I've it, seen some steam showers that I would absolutely pay a million dollars. Oh, for God, yes. If I had it. I mean, I've seen some the, that. The interiors are absolutely gorgeous. Oh, and, yeah. And one right after another after another. I mean, they all do great, great work. Mm hmm. Yeah, so I'm wondering. You should be proud of it. I'm wondering if you could go from underneath, like the cargo area, the cargo bay doors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've seen them with a trap door. Just slide it right up underneath. And yeah, yeah, yeah. With a padded room in the bottom. <laughs> yep, I've seen Somebody that. you don't like, just hit the lever. Uh, yeah. or, or that person don't like anybody on the bus anymore, you yeah. just put them in there. <laughs> oh, Lord, that would be funny. Yeah. I'd have to see that. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah, that would yeah. be fun. Anyway, I'm going down a rabbit trail again. That's, that's, all right. <laughs> that's all right. But I mean, you know, I just I really wanted people to understand, you know, about the tour buses and everything because these guys actually live on them. They do, and they do all that, and for them to actually care about a charity, yeah, like Christmas for kids, yeah, and and. And to donate their home. Yeah, and they're off time. Yeah. You know, the driver's off time. And see, these guys have been out, and man, the last couple of years in the bus business has been some kind of crazy. Well, yeah, after COVID after and everything, COVID, it's like. Yeah, it was some kind of crazy, but they, for them to show up, you know, that first year that Christmas for Kids went back, you know, because mm -hmm. we, uh, we did actually shop for the children. We got some lists together um, in 2020. And mm -hmm. We had about 35, 36 buses come out. Um, we had all the chaperones came out one week and shopped all the lists for the kids. Awesome. For 400 kids. And then um, we collected the lists for probably about a month, month and a half before. And everybody turned in their list. The chaperones came and shopped. Some of the chaperones would come back and said, my list is already done. Give me another list. You know, they, were so, <laughs> they were so stoked to even be, at, you know, and they were brave. They were braving COVID, and they were the risk of COVID, and they were in Walmart, you know, mm -hmm. so always braving that. And then we packed everything up, labeled everything, took it over to a warehouse over in Hendersonville that a gentleman had uh, donated to us. Right. And um, the next week, all the buses showed up, and and those guys were amazing, and they were so excited because initially we thought, you know, we're going to have to cancel Christmas for Kids. It actually was canceled. You know? Yeah. Cause we didn't want to risk it and we couldn't wrap our heads around what, what could we do, you know? And then right. one person gets to thinking and then another person starts discussing and then another one's like, Oh, we can do this. We, you know, we can figure this out. So, oh, yeah. and the guys were, you know, when you start calling them and saying, okay, we're thinking about this is what we're thinking about doing. I'm in. Yeah. Tell me where my, my bus needs to be. So. Yeah. Cause you know, uh, you know it, a lot of people look down on, truck drivers and and you know anybody with a cdl really yeah that's a shame and they're missing out yeah they're missing out because i know a bunch of them and these guys have got the biggest hearts they really do i they mean really do. that's like when i was driving well i had a peterbilt and i had the train horns put on my peterbilt mm. just for the kids because yep. when you're out there on the road yeah and there's you know you got the cv to talk to people and right. stuff but a long stretch of highway. It's lonesome. And then you see a car coming up by you. Mm -hmm. And you can tell there's kids in the back mm -hmm. because they're excited. Mm -hmm. And they get right there next to your truck. And that's 
yep. just that little gesture right there, yep. Yep. you know, and just to blow the horn and watch them just uh, laugh and giggle. Yeah. And I'm guilty of doing that. Well, yeah, it's I a lot still of fun. do that. And I'm old. <laughs> 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 And then Jacob and I will laugh till you know <clears throat> Jacob and I both do it together. Yeah. And John laughs at us. So yeah, we still. Oh do yeah. That. I still do that. Yeah. And of course, but then when I drive by a bus, uh, that's on the if we're traveling or even if I'm in town, you know, even mm. when I'm by myself, I always roll the window down and I'll ride real close because I love the sound of the turbo. You know. Yeah. I've gone to sleep many many times to the sound of a generator or sound of a turbo. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's you know, me too. It's very relaxing. Hit that Jake break one time. Yeah. Just, no. <laughs> I'm just, that still gives me chills. Yeah. A big old cat motor going yeah. down the road yeah. and just let off of it and let that Jake break kick in. Kick in, yeah. Brrr. Yeah. <laughs> that's it, baby. Yeah, yeah. I love it. It's crazy. As I'll get out to them. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of these people, they just – a lot of these guys, they they the biggest hearts you've ever seen in your life. They really do. They really do. Year after year after year, you see these guys, you know, and they they travel so many months out of the year, and they're away mm-hmm. from their families, and then um, they show up and they decorate, and then they're, you know, standing in the middle of the toy department, just soaking it all in. You know? Oh yeah. And uh, you know, most of these guys I've known all my life, and. Um, and when they show up and I'm so excited to see them and I'm, and they're excited to be there, you know, and they know we, we all know together what our mission is, you know, that we're, yeah. we're about to fill these buses up with 400 kids and, and they're going to be so happy and, and 400 kids, 400, 400 on Tuesday. We'll, we're going to take 80 middle school kids on Sunday, right? Sunday, December the 11th. Yeah. And, um, Oh, That's actually, something new we just started. December the 10th, I'm sorry. Yeah, the December, December the 10th. 10th is Sunday. Because I'll be there December 11th and yeah, December 12th. The, yeah, December 11th is a bus show. Yeah, because once Tim gave me your phone number, I hooked up with you, and we we uh, hooked up real yeah, quick. Yeah, you guys are registered as a shepherd. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to enjoy it. You, you're going to be blown away. Blown I, away. You know what? I'll be standing in the toy department looking for you. Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah. You're so I'm excited. A, I, I'm, I'll be. With your buggy full. Well, I mean, I'll be sitting there thinking, man, I want that Lego set. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're not. We're not buying stuff for you. <laughs> it's strictly for the for the shorter people. Oh, yeah. The little dudes. <laughs> the little dude and dudettes. Yeah. Maybe you'll get a dudette. That might. Who that, knows? That'll be an experience. Well, you have uh, you have practice with that. <clears throat> you have girls, right? Yeah, I've got uh, my daughter and then my granddaughter. Oh, so you've and, got practice. Yeah. So, well, I got custody so, of my kids when they were young. Yeah, yeah. So. So. And then. So my, having a girl won't blow you away. Nah. I've seen it a couple times, you know, guy comes up and he's got a girl. And he's I don't like, know what to do. I don't do. even know what to do. <laughs> I said, you'll figure it out. She'll show you. <laughs> Look, we're going over here to Barbie. We're going over here to the Bratz. Uh, I mean, there's all it's kinds all of about it. You know, yeah, and and by the time it's all over with, he's so excited. And the next year, he comes back and says, "I want a girl again." Yeah, <laughs> swap it up. I don't care. Give me this. Give yeah, me that. Yeah, that's the one good thing about our chaperones. You know, we have I have many chaperones that have been coming. You know, year after year, as long as I've been there, they've mm. been there. You know, and then we have chaperones that are come and and um they're new and they're wide-eyed you know and they're just i just in there they bump into you and they come and hug me and they say thank you thank you thank you you know mm-hmm. and i'm like don't thank me all you you know i didn't do anything but push paper you know you yeah but that up, plays that yeah. plays into all of that you know oh my god it's just so wicked cool to see somebody new and then they come back you yeah know? we have a family we have a couple families but one family in particular who um, there was three kids, two boys and a girl. Mm-hmm. And when they were young, when my mom was the secretary, um, they were actually kids that got chosen to be on Christmas for kids. Awesome. And so now those kids are grown and married. And with their mom, they come back now every year in chaperone. 
Oh, that's cool. And, man, the first year that they did that, she walked up to me and told me, and I was just bawling. I was just like, oh, my God, I can't believe you came back. How cool is that? Mm-hmm. So I always tell their story, you know, because I'm, I'm, you know, and I went home to tell my mom, you know, I was like, you're not going to believe this. Back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. It's it's rewarding, it, and it's more, and you cannot explain the day to somebody yeah you just gotta try to get them there and once you get them there it's they're hooked yeah well i mean i was kind of hooked just hanging out on the bus with him because you know that was during the i guess the bus show yes sir and families are coming in you know and and you know you know mom and dad were like in all of the bus, oh, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and everything. Yeah. But the kids, man, the kids yeah. were just like, yeah. they were loving it. Oh, yeah, they do. You know, and they actually probably knew the star that they were there to see yeah, and, and exactly. everything else, yeah. you know. And it's just really cool. Yeah. Well, a lot of the artists are in their house, you yeah. know, because they're on YouTube or, you know, um, or they hear them on the radio mm-hmm. and, and, you know, they fall in love and, and yeah. And they can't wait to get, you know, they'll stand in line and, and can't wait to get that hug. And the artists are so amazing, you know, especially yeah. with ki- the kids that show up for the bus show. And yeah. especially when some of them volunteer to come back the next day mm-hmm. and, and spend the day with the kids and, and understand why they were there the night before, you know. And I always love that. I always love when an artist will come, sometimes incognito, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, um, and then get their crews. We had uh, one guy from the Backstreet Boys, I think it was. And he was the nicest guy. So cool. And he brought his security with him. Yeah. And, um, of course, the security guy was huge, you know. Oh, of course. Just a big old tough guy. Well, yeah, he wasn't. Like, <laughs> <laughs> was he in tears? He had a little soft side. Oh. Eric did, yeah. Yeah, he was a, he was a cool guy. You know, most really big guys are just softies. big teddy bears anyway. Yeah, my dad was a big guy, and he was a big old softy. Yeah, well, my dad was 6'2". Yeah. And you put a kid in his lap, mm-hmm. it was over. Yeah. You know, I mean, he, he loved them kids. Yeah. You know, and uh, I don't know, it was just, that's something I grew up with. Yeah. Well, these guys, um, the guy, guys and girls that bring their buses, you know, they are they look forward to this. You know, sometimes in the middle of the summer they'll be out on the road. Okay, what's the dates? What's the dates? Yeah. What the you know they're calling or texting or, all right, just so you know, I'm planning my winter around. You know, mm-hmm. my tour is going to end and I'm going to be right there and then I'm going to go home. You know, and yeah. so I know that they're hooked and I know that they I know why they do it. I know they do do it because they know the kids need some love and they need some fun and, oh yeah and well i mean tim knew the dates he knew oh, yeah. everything he, he was like you know yeah he's already been informed <laughs> i've got to do this and i got to do that yeah, you know yeah, and yeah well, he better get his decorations together well that's that's on him <laughs> i ain't mm, he'll be ooh. in trouble he'll be in trouble i'm not dressing up as santa claus either i'm sorry no. You've already got a Santa Claus. We already have a Santa Claus. Yeah, we, <laughs> we try not to confuse the kids. We'll have a, uh, we have one bus driver, and for the last two or three years, he's, well, I didn't tell you that. All the guys on Monday night, on Monday, they'll be decorating their bus. Mm-hmm. And um, so the public that comes in and pays to come in gets to vote on the best decorated bus. Okay, yeah. And so, um, a little, little healthy competition, a little healthy competition. Yep. And so for the last two or three years, uh, a bus driver named Kenneth Williams has won the trophy. Awesome. So, um, and I'm going to tell you, he goes all out. He is starts decorating on Sunday when he first gets parked up and he does not stop till like four fifty nine on Monday night. Wow. <laughs> and it is absolutely gorgeous. And he and his girl dress up like Santa. Mm hmm. And Mrs. Claus, and they take pictures. They're all set up outside the bus, and they have hot chocolate. And I think I seen that yeah, last year. Right he had like a whole corner. whole yeah. little scene yep. Yep. by side the a bus. A whole little scene. Yeah. A whole little scene. But so they, um, that's what they start doing. 
mm-hmm. and their staff, all the bus company, a lot of the bus company staff comes and helps decorate or they start decorating at the shop and then they're toting stuff. Oh, I got this. I got that, you know, yeah. and it's all, uh, the people that you work with become family when you get to do something like that together. I think, you know, oh, yeah. they, everybody gets a whole lot closer. And so all of the, you know, the employees, of all the bus companies get involved too. You know, you got the guy out there washing buses. Well then yeah. after he's finished washing buses, he's hanging lights on the side of a bus. And you got the girls who normally work themselves to death cleaning. They've cleaned up. Now they're decorating. Mm. Now they have to go back and clean up again because <laughs> the decorations make it such a mess. So, and, um, it's a labor of they, love. They really, they, uh, they all really work hard to get prepped for this. And they're unsung heroes, you know, behind the behind the um, behind the bus. I'd say, you know. Well, I mean, you know, that's that's a whole big thing, part of it, you know. Yeah. It's because those kids, man, they see that stuff. Yeah. They see the decorations. This was all for me. I've heard that say so many times. Yeah. And you're like, yes, baby, that was. This was all for you. Mm-hmm. We did it all, and I'm gonna see. I'm gonna start crying now. But when you <laughs> <laughs> when you have a baby standing there and he's looking at the bus and he says, "I can honk the horn," you know, and of course mm-hmm. the you know all of them will say, "Yep." Hey, let's talk to so and so on the CB. And then they start singing Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer over the CB, and you can hear it mm-hmm. in all of those buses, you know. Yeah. And we're all. Um, what happens on Tuesday is um, we will, the chaperones will show up and we'll have a meeting and those are the all day chaperones. Okay. And um, we'll have a meeting and then they'll all get assigned to a bus and the bus driver will take them out to the bus and show them with the bus and they'll discuss the bus rules and they'll have a little bit of time to grab a quick lunch and then every bus has a different leave time. And so the buses will all leave the parking lot and go to the schools and pick up the kids at school that have been chosen. On the 12th. On the 12th, yes, that we would do this all on the 12th. And then um, the kids are chosen by their school counselors and their teachers at school because they know, you know, who needs um, some assistance, you know, who's having a hard time. And so uh, we pick the kids up and then all the buses meet back up because we pick up kids in Wilson County Mm -hmm. and we pick up kids, uh, elementary school kids, all in Sumner County. Right. So they all meet up at the Gallatin Civic Center over on the other side of Gallatin. Okay. um, They have a pizza party with Santa. Awesome. And uh, that's sponsored by Garth. Uh, Garth has paid for the pizza party for several years. Awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool that he does that. Yeah. And um, so we have us a big party. There's a band there, and they sing. And there's, (laughs) (laughs) it's like jumping beans. You have chaperones jumping and dancing, and then you have kids jumping and dancing. They're Mm -hmm. just so excited. And then they get to hug the neck of of, uh, Santa and get their, you know, get their pictures taken and man, they have such a big fun. And oh, then I can imagine we load them all back up on these buses. And the most buses I've ever had was 86. And I'm telling you, it was a sight to see. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. It was, um, you know, and every bus is 45 foot long. I mean, 86 buses that we, we, we was a traffic jam. So well, we were. yeah, but, uh, well, we sure were pretty. And, um, the Gallatin police department and the Sumner County EMA, and the uh, um, Sumner County Sheriff's Department and the Hendersonville Police Department, they all escort us um, from point A to point B. And so we are all load up at the Civic Center, and then everybody travels from Gallatin into Hendersonville to the Walmart in Hendersonville, and we'll get there about 6 o'clock. Yeah. And um, I'm usually standing in the parking lot waiting on them to get there, and I can hear them coming. Mm-hmm. And um, the horns are honking, the train horns are all going off, you know. Oh, yeah. And then um, the trolley leads of the Gray Line trolley. Uh, Gray Line donates our trolley and transports Santa. Cool. From the Civic Center. So he leads the parade, and it is a, a quite the sight to see. Right. You know? And then all the kids get really excited. Mostly the boys get really excited, but um, because they get to run all the red lights in Gallatin. Well, yeah. <laughs> and the, <laughs> And I'll get the, excited over the, that. But the, poli- the police told them to do it. And so they're even more excited. You know, those cops told us we could run the red light. You know, they get, <laughs> and then they're singing on the CB and, you know, they're, um, 
honking the horns and making so much noise, and it is amazing. And then when they start coming into the Walmart parking lot, their faces are all stuck to the windshields of the buses, <laughs> you know, and they're waving, and I'm waving, you know. I know several times I've left the parking lot once the last bus gets parked. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've left the parking lot and could barely move my arms because I was away, oh, waving I so much. And I blow them all kisses, you know. <laughs> I see all my chaperones in the windows, too, and they're all so excited. And I stand out there in the parking lot and cry every year. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, because that's... <laughs> well, it fills you full of joy that you mm-hmm. cannot explain to anybody else. Oh, yeah. You know, because you know that every little face is about all, all that he's been dreaming about or she's been dreaming about. Mm-hmm. her list is about to be complete and and it may be i might cry again but it may be the very first time that they've had a list and it got completed yeah you know that they could buy just two or three things on the list you know it might be the very first time that they've actually had more than two hugs you're right about that you're right about that and really you know, I know from personal experience from having conversations with my kids that came back and became chaperones mm-hmm. that that's who they remember. Mm-hmm. They remember the bus driver and they remember the chaperone who loved them mm-hmm. that day. And the bus driver made them feel like a rock star. And um, the chaperones hugged them like their mom, you know, yeah. you know, or their dad would do, you know. And that's a... When you love somebody unconditionally, even for a small amount of time, that lasts a lifetime. Oh, yeah. And they never forget it. They never forget. Well, I mean, I'm <clears throat> if, if more people had that innocence yeah. like a child yeah, and that unconditional love, a lot of things would be a whole lot better in this world. The world would be a much better place. Oh, yeah. You're right. You're right. So, I got a feeling I'm going to be crying half this stuff that I'm going to be doing. I won't video you, I promise. <laughs> you might not have to. I might have a video <laughs> camera carrying it around. Who knows? I hope you do. Well, I'm, I plan on doing a lot of Facebook Live stuff. I would put it on a stick if I were you. I'm on, I don't know. I might hit Tim with it or something, you know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> He'll be on the outskirts of the toy department. Usually, he's. I don't think he digs right into the toy department. <sighs> he's scared of his inner child. It is. <laughs> I'm telling you. Because if you go to Tim's house, he's got enough toys. Toys, yeah, yeah. A drum kit, yeah. a bass guitar. I think he bought a board and some other stuff yeah. the other day. So. That's funny. His cable management is sucks. <laughs> he, he, he showed me a picture of the drum kit. And I'm looking, and the only thing I can see is all the cables. The cords. Oh, I can't stand Twist it up yeah. and just. I, my OCD drives oh me crazy. Oh, God. My engineering days drive me nuts with that. Yeah. You know, I'd be like, God, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, even what I've got done here, where I had to move everything back over, mm-hmm. that small pile in the floor is driving mm-hmm. me nuts. Yeah, yeah. But this looks real nice. Well, just I mean, I tried to do something Stay here. With it. Just stay here. I just tried to do something with it. <laughs> I might have to move to that end and just put Caitlin here. Yeah, yeah. That's my damn show. I'll put her over there. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> don't turn the dishwasher on previously, though. Yeah, because so last night it was yeah. funny as I'll get out, yeah. y'all. She Caitlin, was sweating. She was sweating. <laughs> Somebody turned the dishwasher on, and it went through the cycle, you know. So it got to that end cycle where it was nothing but, Release drying the steam, yeah and the steam was coming up she's standing next to the counter where the boards are and that steam is just coming up and she's like oh my god i feel like i'm in a sauna yeah she got a partial facial yeah kitchen. you know uh, <laughs> hey no charge no charge it was free free it may smell like cascade but no big deal <laughs> i don't know what i don't even know what we use i prefer washing hand washing not me I can't stand a dishwasher. I love a dishwasher. Well, I'm divorced, so I ain't got no dishwasher. Uh, uh, I just got that dishwasher. Yeah. uh, (laughs) Electronic dishwasher. (laughs) (laughs) Now, see, just that little statement right there, I'm going to get in trouble over that crap. uh, Yeah, you're already in trouble. I I don't care. (laughs) I don't care. 
do not care at all. Yeah. So we're having a concert before we actually go shopping. Well, that's what I was actually fixing to get into. Yeah, so uh, November the 20th, we've still got some tickets, some uh, tickets available. At the Ryman. It's at the Ryman. Got yep. Shenandoah's headlining, I believe. Yeah, Shenandoah and Phil Vassar. Mm-hmm. And um, we have Hunter Girls coming. Oh, yeah, I, see, I totally forgot about Hunter Girl from yeah. last night. Yeah, yeah, she's coming. She does hunt, right? I think she does. Okay. Well, I mean, you can't have the name like that unless you're right. Yeah, I think unless you hunt. Yeah, she might be your professional. That would be nice. And Michaela Lane is coming. She's from Tulsa. Tulsa. Yeah, she's a, she's a good. You know they and they both have amazing amazing voices. And then we have Chapel Heart coming, which is mm-hmm. they are so fu- they are talented, beautiful voices, but they are funny. So, and that's good. I know. I know. That funny is built in with them. They're amazing. I went to. And Phil uh, Vassar is pretty funny, too. So. Yeah. Yeah. I went to. Uh, oh, God. This is a long time ago. Back in 99. I was out in Memphis. I was a safety director. Mm-hmm. And we had this DOT class that we had to go to. Yeah. And we were out there. And at night, we could do whatever we wanted. Right. So, me and a couple of them, we went down to Beale Street. Yeah. Checked it out, you know. Yeah. And we ended up going in this place and it was called Dueling Pianos. Oh wow. And it was that two guys. Like a Phil Vassar kind of place. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. And it was just two pianos. They were facing each other. They were, you know, the big ones. And those guys cracked me up all night long. Yeah. They were changing lyrics to songs. They were doing <laughs> stuff, you know. And, <laughs> feeding off each other yeah. and i mean it was just a great show yeah yeah and i've never seen anything like it again yeah yeah i'd love to see it i know you should start that you can you should. play piano no i cannot but, <laughs> I, but I know somebody <laughs> hey that's all it takes <laughs> he's gonna be at the ramen on november the 20th <laughs> <laughs> and he's amazing oh <sighs> so that uh that Still. show go ahead sorry no, you're fine. Um, so there's still plenty of tickets for that? There's some tickets left, yep. yep. You can buy them on our website, and you can buy them at the the com. I think com also. Okay. Ticketmaster. Ah, uh, the Ticketmaster. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And that's our major uh, money-making. That's, that's actually how we take the kids shopping. Yeah. Um, we have... Um, Throughout the year, we, we're raising money, and we have great sponsors. And uh, But our main money maker is the ticket sales from that show that we do in November. Right. And for many years, Charlie Daniels helped us um, with that show. And, man, every year, it was just, he was amazing. Showed yeah. up, you know, and all the artists volunteer their time. They don't, yeah. you know, they're, they don't get paid. And their band volunteers their time and, and to be there and, he um, had the biggest heart for a man, I tell you. Oh, he did. He did. And he ki- was great. kids, he was the one that would, you know, melt with the story of a kid, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, but he he was a, an amazing human. Yeah, he was. Yeah. God bless him. Very generous. Yeah, he was. I mean, it, you know, and he wasn't. You ever meet a star and they kind of like standoffish? Yes. He was. No. Nope. No. I mean, it was just like. He just got through shoveling dirt or something right. and just turned around and was talking to you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just a plain old country boy. That's what I like. Yeah, me too. That's what I am. Yeah. Well. You're plain old good girl. I am plain old country girl. <laughs> <laughs> not going to change. <laughs> no, I'm not either. I mean, it, it. I don't think people should let situations or dollar signs change them i don't I, you know it's just it's stuff okay it's just stuff that don't mean you quit being a human right right unless you're a anyway i ain't gonna say that word yeah. but um yeah if you're a bad person to begin with yeah you know and that's just i don't see why anybody should be bad i mean it, it just there's so much love to give around, and, and there really is everything going on. I'd rather cry a tear of happiness than a tear of sorrow. Yeah, me too. 
I'm all cried out on the sorrow. I just can't do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're gonna. You better prep yourself. Get you some Kleenex. I'm gonna bring a hanky. You better. <laughs> you're not gonna need it. <laughs> I think we got some terry cloth towels around here yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Some uh, of the most of the buses have terry cloth towels. Yeah. The color coordinated to the bus. So you well, you get the small them. ones, and they're real good for polishing your guitar. Yeah. So. True that. That's what you have to do. You won't have time for that on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> no. And the day starts really, you know, for the all-day chaperones, the day starts really early, but then you turn around and all of a sudden it's over with and you're going, man. Did I eat? Did, did I? I eat? Yeah. Yeah, what just happened to me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going home, going to bed. I'm going home and going to bed. Well, that's what you said last night after, what, after the 14th or 15th, you just... I, yeah, I collapse. I, we have necessities that we have to take care of the day after, you know, somebody mm-hmm. loses their glasses and somebody found them in a bus or they've lost oh, their yeah. backpack and it's got their homework in it, you know, and so that stuff has to get back, you know, yeah. or, or you have a baby that they didn't get the bicycle on the bus. And so um, usually spend our next day, you know, each of us spend our next day doing little things like that, you know, little running up, errands, tidying up. But then I close my computer. Once school is officially over that day, we know we usually <laughs> not going to have anything else happen. So I shut my computer and I don't get out of the bed. Me and the dog stays in the bed the whole next day. <laughs> You know, and John and Jacob will pop their head in. You all right? You need anything? Nope. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. My phone's turned off. My At 530 computer. tonight, bring me a steak and a baked tater, and yeah, I'll be good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm lucky to have them. They're a good support system. They help me, you know, and, and um, with Jacob. You know, when I was growing up, I was my mom's step and fetch. I helped my mom mm-hmm. do this. You know, I helped her um get packets together for the kids, permission yeah. slips, uh, helped her go around and pick them up and helped her check to see. And with all the kids have name tags and helped yeah. her make name tags. I mean, and then we would. Um, you got the bite early on that. Very early, very early. I mean, we would yeah. stand in the street and collect change. Yeah. During Halloween, we would go around to certain neighborhoods and collect money instead of collecting candy Mm -hmm. um and um it was all you know donated to christmas for kids the neighborhoods would usually know we were coming and we would go back every year to the same neighborhoods and and then you know when it was warm and garage sale season ever people you know would donate stuff and we would sell it and and use the money to take the kids or we would up and have a bus show somewhere you know because when you get out of this area for most people, when you get out of this area, when you're in a bus, mm-hmm. people are staring at you. They're trying to look in the windows. They're trying yeah. to figure out. Or you get out of the bus, and they're like, "Who's in the bus?" Oh yeah. And you know, we'll sometimes, most of the time, we lie. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> I did. Uh, uh, I did tell somebody that Freddie Fender was in the bus one day. We were in a town, oh, town in Texas. That was a lot of fun. I hope there wasn't a lot of women standing around because Freddie Fender back in the day, it was like, yeah. <laughs> Freddie Fender was all that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was, was a man. Freddie Fender's, I, maybe it wasn't Freddie Fender, but I mean, he was uh, so, but when you get out of the area, people are, you know, they're intrigued by the mm-hmm. interior of the bus, you know, just like you said, you had never seen the inside of a bus. And so, it's well, rare I mean, through to the, find somebody like that in this area that are yeah. familiar with the bus. But you get out of the city limits or you get out of, you know, a 100-mile radius and people are staring you down on the yeah. freeway, you know. Well, I mean, when I would pull into like a fuel stop or something like that, if one of them was there, yeah, you could see through the front windshield. Yeah, you can see. I think that's the only way you could actually see inside True. the bus. Yeah, yeah. Because the windows on the side are all darked They're out. They're all, yeah, limo tint. And, uh, you know, you could just be like, Man, it's that crazy. looks like somewhere I could live, yeah. you know. Yeah, and it is. They all do it year after year after year, month after month. Yeah, you know and then uh, some of the motor homes now that you can buy, they're they're pretty decked out. Very decked out. I mean, with a big price tag, multi-million dollar vehicles out there mm-hmm. that sleep too. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe four. <laughs> With a special place under the bottom, you yeah, put the yeah, Harley exactly. right there. Yeah, or the padded room. Yeah, Pat, padded room. Is yeah, fine. put the padded room down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I would vote for a padded room instead of a Harley. 
Mm, yeah, I've had my early days, and, and I just, uh, with the traffic and everything, I just. People run you down. I just don't want to get on the bike no more. Yeah. yeah that's I mean, I'd rather get on a side-by-side and go hit the woods, mm-hmm. play in a mud hole somewhere. Mm-hmm. I like mud. See the nature. Yeah, I like mud. A bunch of us, we, um, what well, we used to when I had my side-by-side, um, we would go out to East Tennessee, out mm-hmm. Wind Rock and Royal Blue and all that. Yeah. And the one place that stands out the most to me was at Wind Rock. And I can't remember the number of the trail to save me because there's so many trails out there at Windrock. It's amazing. But we had went around the backside, and we were on the backside of a hill. Mm -hmm. And it was a good ridge line, Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And there was like a creek to the left. The trail was to the right. But there was four or five huge boulders yep. that you could tell came off that ridge line. Right. And there was trees a mm-hmm. hundred years old mm-hmm. growing on the very top of them. Yeah. With the roots coming down around the rock. Yeah. And it was just it was gorgeous. Right. I was so in awe over that I totally forgot to take a picture. Yeah. And I keep telling people I want to get back out there. Yeah. We have a place like that that we go to in Illinois that mm-hmm. side-by-sides are in the mud and are involved. Yeah. And there's an element when you're out there, you know, and you see nothing but nature and deer and, mm-hmm. and water and, you know, trees and cornfields. And there's just, it's a healing place for me. Yeah. I love to go there, you know, and you see everybody and they're happy and they're Having like, fun. Having fun and relaxing and, you know, we're yeah. not stuck to our computers and stuck to our phones. Even, mm-hmm. you know, I have a teenager. He doesn't even know where his phone is from the time that we get there to the time. Oh, my phone transforms to a, a photo taken yeah. or a video taken. That, you yeah, know? that or a paperweight, which is yeah. amazing. Or it's dead because he doesn't even know where it's at, <laughs> which, is, which is cool, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's... I had, when I had my side by side, I didn't put a sound bar on it or anything else. Yeah. You know, and some of the guys I rode with, they didn't have it either. Yeah. But there was times I would be out, we'd be out there riding, and all of a sudden you hear this thumping out in the woods and everything yeah. else. And I'm just like, dude, you're freaking killing yeah. nature, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I like to get out there just because of the silence. Right. Yeah. The peace, the, yeah. the beauty of it all. Yeah. Hearing the wind. Mm-hmm. that's the only thing you can hear is the wind in your ears yeah now i'm a I, I like thumping you know i have a big old stereo system in my truck that's pretty loud and i want your truck i like your truck no you cannot have it i've waited a long time for my truck mm. i miss a jacked up truck i love it i love it that truck i got out there now is a two-wheel drive and it's short and i'm wondering why in the heck did i buy a two-wheel drive yeah and i remember because COVID made all the freaking trucks go through the freaking roof. Right, exactly. I still ain't figured that one out. No. no I think there was a, a pr- product issue. Yeah, truck shortage. They couldn't yeah. get the, the computers. Yeah, there was some kind of chip or something. Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. And I'm just like, y'all didn't make enough to begin We survived with. it, though. We all survived. Yeah. Um, we survived it. I remember thinking, God, how are we going to survive this? You know, not worried about getting the fungus, but worried about, you know, surviving, you know, mentally surviving. I'm wondering, to see the way I was raised, if my mom found out some kid in the neighborhood caught the measles mm-hmm. or mumps, Chicken pox. She'd be grabbing my hand, dragging my butt down there going, come on. Yeah. yeah, Immunity. Let's go ahead and get it over with. Speaking of catching something. <laughs> Dumb. I'll tell you a funny story. I go for it. <laughs> I like funny stories. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't tell this story. Well, it's up to you. Well, I don't care. We have lots of... Uh, over the years, had stories with kids. 
Mm-hmm. And um, and we have this one bus driver. He's our fuzziest bus driver. And I'm just going to stop. Fuzzy it. He's fuzzy. But, but fuzzy. He's fuzzy everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and I love him. He's like a brother to me. Like a, what was that Muppet? Was it? I can't remember the name. Fozzie. Of Fozzie. 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 Yeah. He's like Fozzie. Yeah. <laughs> Fozzie the bear. Well, one year, bless it, we had a kid that had head lice. Oh. Plus, he wound up assigned to the fuzziest driver's <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> and the if the bus company, bless their hearts, they had to have the bus, the whole bus bombed, you know, yeah. because you, just, you don't know where the baby's at, you know. That's right. At, or where he's been. And so I remember he called me and he said, guess where all my stuff is that was on the bus? And I said, where? And he said, sitting outside. (laughs) (laughs) He said, I'm hoping the frost will kill all the head lice that was on my bus. And I was like, oh, no, I'm so sorry. Nope, it won't. Nope, it won't. But I just thought it was funny that the fuzzy of all bus drivers, the fuzziest. The hairiest fellow. The hairiest guy. Yeah. Yeah. That is funny. Yeah, but he's ornery. So. (laughs) Ornery and mean. Uh, 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 <coughs> just ornery. Uh-huh. Ornery and fuzzy. Man. So we have experiences like that, too, that we laugh about, you know, throughout the years. Oh, I'll tell you another one. Uh-huh. Bus decorations. My One of my very favorite, of course, my dad's decorations we still use uh, on my dad's bus. But um, those are my very favorite decorations mm-hmm. for personal reasons. But... Um, well, you've had them a long time. Yeah, yeah. And they were all bought by him, you know, and he yeah. would set them out exactly the way he set them all up, you know, and the bus glows blue in the inside. But um, on Sunday night, you know, we start parking pretty late at night. We're all mm-hmm. up and we're all excited to see each other. You know, sometimes we'll be up till the early morning, <laughs> early morning hours. Well, yeah. when I go, um, I leave my house on Sunday and I don't go back. I didn't go back till Tuesday night. Now I don't go back till Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I, Sunday night, early morning hours of Monday, I decided to go to bed in the bus. We sleep in the bus. So mm-hmm. I came out of the, opened the door to the bus, and in front of me is a bus with a noodle mohawk. Oh, and man. I laughed about it all day long. It was the best decoration ever. I can and, imagine. And he just opened up the door, and here's all these noodles on top of a bus, giving the bus a mohawk. I mean, it was just freaking priceless. Wow. And uh, that was one of my favorite years. You know, everybody you know out there, I love it when they decorate. I just love mm-hmm. it, you know. And uh, Well, just think of what the kids are thinking about that. Yeah, yeah, when the a bus with a mohawk. <laughs> It was hilarious. It was hilarious. And, you know, that it, that day is, well, that whole Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, really Tuesday, is organized chaos. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many chaperones are going to show up. I don't know how many buses are going to show up. Right. I, I have a guess. I have some that's warned me, and I have some that's been coming for years, never warned anybody. They just show up. You know, yeah. here I am. I knew it was coming. And so um, I just never know, but it all comes together perfectly. And year after year after year, we have the perfect amount of chaperones and the perfect amount of buses to take care of these kids, and it all works out. But um, I love it. It's crazy. It's organized chaos at its finest. Well, yeah. That's where you get some of the best experiences. It really is. It really really is. It's... (sighs) I've done I've done shows before where it was everything was smooth and the artist was there, the band went on, everything was like clockwork, and I was freaking bored. But when it's like you don't know where the artist is, he's running late. Right. This is this and this is that, he and showed up with one boot. Yeah, and the bass player is gotten in a fight with somebody over some girl and everything else, you know, and, and just the chaos of it all. Yeah. And you're just like, but they still pull off a heck of a show. Yeah. 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 You it's know? a miracle. And you're sitting in there, there at the end going, Oh my God, we all survived. Uh huh. We did it. We did it again. Yeah. You know, you know we because it a- is we, it's not me. It's not them. It's not, 
it's not just um you know our crew that work year round mm-hmm. you know, we have a board and we have staff members you know and we all work year round you know some of us a little bit more than others and then it evens out in the end and yeah and without each of us doing what we need to get done accomplished you know we um we wouldn't be successful no no but it is a it is a straight up miracle come nine thirty <clears throat> at night when we're paying our bill at Walmart and we, <laughs> we all look like the bus is all ran over us, you know, and we're all exhausted. But there is a um, there is a blanket of peace that goes all over you when you know that each child has been returned to their parent. You know, all yeah. the, all the parents have come and and have met the kids at the school and. And you got that last bus that rolls back into the parking lot, dropping off their chaperones. You know everybody's good, and mm-hmm. and it was a success. Yeah, and our bills paid. So, and a bunch of kids are happy. Oh, yeah, yeah, because they've been dreaming about it for two months. You know. Oh yeah. We we pass well actually yeah about two and a half months. We start passing out permission slips in the beginnings of October. Right. Middle of October. And then we go back and pick them up. So since the middle of October, they've been making a list. Oh, Lord. And dreaming about it. (laughs) (laughs) And then they actually get to, you know, it physically comes true. You Mm -hmm. You don't know what they've been through and how hard their life is. And, you know, maybe it's just a little bit of a struggle this year. You know, you need to get over the speed bump. You know, you you don't ever know what the situation's going to be. No, you don't. And, well, I mean... You probably was raised up like I was. <clears throat> we didn't have a whole lot, but we didn't really know we didn't have a whole lot. Right, you know? exactly. And then once we get into adults, it's like, wow, wow, okay. Uh, hey, mom, what, what, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> what happened? Uh, yeah, exactly. Why didn't I have that nineteen seventy nine brand new off the showroom floor Z twenty eight? Right, yeah. Because I was struggling to make ends meet. You just didn't, weren't paying attention. Yeah. Because your dad was working and I was trying to take care of you and do yeah. this and do yeah. that. I mean, it was how kids are raised nowadays is, is almost black and white. Right. You know. Well, and unless they're exposed to something like I was, mm-hmm. you know, growing up around this organization and you see the blessings that you yeah. have yeah. because in your face every year that, you know, you've got kids that have showed up with no coat, mm-hmm. you know, the shoe, they don't, some of them don't have matching shoes. Some yeah. of them have shoes that's got holes in them or they're, you know, their clothes are too small for them. And, and then they show up, no coat, no, no good shoes. And they want to buy a gift for their little sister. Mm-hmm. And that or they want to buy a little you know some earrings for their mom yeah and you know you're almost that pure unconditional love like that in these kids blows me away yeah because it's like they're they're not they're not an adult they're not greedy they're not trying to nope. do just for themselves exactly. they actually think of others yeah exactly exactly you know, and that's, I hear it in my granddaughter sometimes, mm. you know, I mean, she literally would give you the shirt off her back. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's doing something right then. I don't know who, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it's just, <sighs> well, I think it's what you expose your kids to, you know, yeah. um, Jake, my own son is, uh, there's not a whole, he doesn't want for anything. Yeah. You know, he has, he makes uh, great grades. He has a uh, very intelligent kid, but he is so compassionate and mm-hmm. so empathetic and is involved with Christmas for kids. He helps me. He comes to the civic center and helps. Well, and somebody's got to reach my idea. That was his idea. And when, yeah. he, when he says, when your own kid says to you, I want to come out of the civic center and I want to help. Yeah. I want to be a part of this. Man. Is he like the tallest elf ever? He is. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, Lord. He is. He's my favorite elf. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I, I just, I wish more people would be like that. I do, too. I do, too. And yeah. that's why I'm excited to be a part of this, because I, I just, I think it's something great. And 
you can thank Tim because he kind of hooked me yeah. last year, you know. Oh, I'll thank Tim when I see him. Open hand or closed? <laughs> I'm, a clo- I'm a closed hand kind of girl. <laughs> Tim, you better duck, dude. Better That's duck. all I can say. Duck, dude. Duck, dude. The duck, dude. Yeah. We could nickname him that. Yeah, we could. Thurber the duck, dude. Thurber the duck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he's been called worse today. Uh, Probably. Probably, yeah. <laughs> he's a cool guy. I've called him worse a couple of times. <laughs> You know, we give them all a, a hard time. I know well, I really do give them a hard time, but, man, I love those guys if and you're the girls. Like, if you're like me, I pick on people. I really do, too. That I like. Yeah, I do, too. Yeah. And I if I don't that. like you, I'm not going to talk to yeah, you. Yeah, I got that all natural. Most of those guys out there know who my dad was. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not, I, the apple did not fall far from the tree. Awesome. When you're, when you're having a conversation with me. How did your dad and mom get involved with all of it? Well, my mom and my mom was the, um, like I said, we lived in Texas, and my mom was the Texas representative for Conway Twitty. Okay. And um, well, that's yesterday. I, I I sat there and I told Julie after you left, I was like, I never really got the tie in how yeah. how they became a part of. Yeah, it. they were friends with Billy and uh, with Conway um, for many years before we moved to Tennessee. Okay. Cool. And then my dad said, um, we're moving. That just like that? We're moving, yeah. And uh, he came here six months before we moved and found a job. And he called my mom and said, you can pack or you can stay, but I'm not coming back there. So we moved. And uh, Awesome. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so that's how we got involved with Christmas for Kids because they were, um, you know, friends with Billy and with mm-hmm. Conway and Bruce and and uh johnny meredith and all yeah. of those guys you know the pde and and all those uh veteran drivers hoop warden <coughs> yeah you know so and you know my dad didn't drive a bus back in those days but that was what he wanted that's what he moved to tennessee f- to do was yeah. to drive a bus that's what his ultimate dream was so and he was back in the silver eagle days yeah back in those days yeah, yeah. I think it was a green hornet, actually. I <laughs> and a few other choice names, I think. Well, I mean, you know, I think, what, well, back in the 40s and 50s? I wonder where busing actually started. Um, you know, there's a story to that, and it, I, I just read not too long ago who actually had the very first bus, and now it slipped my mind. I don't know. I'm well, I mean, back it. in the... Back in the day, Bill Monroe and all them, they all loaded up in like a wagon. Yeah, a lot of them, yeah, used their station wagon. and Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, I think in the very beginning, a lot of people flew also, you know. And then, you know, which is kind of funny to think about, but the flying mm. versus, you know, because there wasn't a bus. So yeah. somebody said, well, how about, you know, we do a bus. And I, I don't think the buses were real fancy back then. Was, no, they're they kind of like weird cedar, looking. Cedar coaches, you know, yeah. cedar buses, you know. But they, were, they weren't weird looking. They were pretty cool. I, I like, mean, I some like of an them. old school bus. Because <laughs> I remember that. Like what, was the, what was the name of that movie? Mm, Lord. The f- all female baseball teams because of the war. Oh, yeah, I remember. I remember that. seeing that bus that they were traveling Oh, yeah, that's on. a cool bus, yeah. That was cool. Yeah. I like that bus. It was like a Hank Snow bus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's just, I'm sorry, we could sit here and talk that's buses right. all day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I love buses. I love the sound, the smell, the everything about them. See, I'm I'm more big truck. I just, yeah. something about it's those twin stacks. Room. It's in your bloodstream. Mm, well, it's my dad always wanted to be a truck driver. Yeah, but he never did mm-hmm. because of me. Yeah. So then he I was always you into a truck driver. Well, I mean, I was always fascinated by him, you know. Yeah. And then Smokey and the Bandit come oh, out. Yeah. And oh yeah. Convoy and oh, all these oh. other ones, and Convoy. you know, and Red Savine with you know. The teddy bear song and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know all those things, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it was just I remember <laughs> it got in my blood. Yeah, it really did. Yeah. And then I started driving. Oh God, it was after I got. I think I was divorced for from the first one, 
That sounds so bad every time I say that, I swear. Um, but I started driving, but I was only local. Yeah. Because I think it was like five years later, I got custody of the kids. Yeah. And uh, I just, uh, I did everything I could. And then once the kids got to a certain age, I started OTR. Yeah. More money. Right. You know. Yeah. And uh, I'd go out and stay gone all week. Yeah. And then when I come in on the weekends, I was downtown Nashville doing the lights and sound, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it just. Uh, I know when my dad started driving. I'm sorry I interrupted you. No, no, you're fine. When my dad started driving, he had his own electrical business. Mm -hmm. And he drove on the weekend. Yeah. And he would come in and he would do electrical business. He would do it like a trim into a house. Yeah. And then after I got out of school, mom and I would go out there and help him. And then he would come home, get everything done. He had to do by Thursday or whenever the bus had to leave. And then mm -hmm. we'd go on all weekend long driving a bus and then come home, be electrician, you know. Yeah. It was crazy. He about killed us all, you know, <laughs> doing that electrical business. And then he did. we were never so glad when he decided he was going to go out on the road and do it full time. Yeah. Know? And then. Um, Those side jobs that kill you. Oh, he. he, he, he and both of us, we, you know, you know, at the very end, it, we were his only employees, you know. Oh, well, yeah. And it didn't matter what time of day or not it was, you know. I remember <coughs> one year, Santa was at my house. It mm -hmm. was 12 o'clock. I was supposed to be in bed, told all my life that I was supposed to be in bed by, you know, a certain amount of time, or Santa wasn't even going to show up at my house. All right. Well, I'm in the rafters of the commercial building pulling wire with my dad and i'm like dude do you know what time it is i said santa is at our house he's not gonna stop he's not gonna come by mm -hmm. if we don't get home we gotta go home and he was like if i don't finish this santa ain't showing up and, yeah. I, and I was like oh okay well yeah. i guess here we're stuck here you know yeah but um it was an interesting life he lived <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, you did what you had to do. You do what you have to do for your kids. And, and you know, I've been in scenarios like that myself yeah. for our own kid. But Well, I remember when I, mean, I was. My dad worked hard. Yeah. My dad you know, was the perfect example of a hard work, and it didn't matter. He didn't know the word. You can't, never could. You know, he yeah. used to always say all the time, I don't want to hear the word can't come out your mouth. Yeah. You know, you can and I don't care if you're a girl. I don't care how heavy it is. You mm -hmm. know, I don't care what has to be accomplished. You got to get it accomplished. Yeah, and get it done. Yeah, yeah. That was my dad's favorite saying. Yeah. Just get it done. Just get it done. <laughs> you know. <laughs> he used to tell me, you work harder getting out of work than you actually do during the work. I have Still said work. that many times. <laughs> <laughs> I have said that more than once. Yeah. I mean, it, it just... <laughs> But dad, dad worked second shift, two to ten. Yeah, never got off at ten. Never. He'd always do any overtime whatsoever. He was there, mm -hmm. and that's what he did. Oh. And then on the weekends, he had a friend, and that friend's dad owned a farm, mm -hmm. and he was. I don't know if he was hell bent on working the dog crap out of me or not, <laughs> but. You'd think that. <laughs> but every weekend, because we had dirt bikes. Right. And we would go help them mm -hmm. on the farm. Yeah. You know, and nine, ten years old, I'm out there driving a the tractor. Right. Pulling the wagons, and they're yeah. getting hay up on it. and Yeah. We're loading it up in the rafters. and Yeah, that's hard work. And then tobacco season come around, I think mm -hmm. he had... I think he had like 20, 25 acres tobacco base. Mm, mm. You know, it's hard work. Yeah. Done that. First time I ever got stoned was on the top of a, a tobacco barn, and oh. it was just from the fumes coming up. Oh, my. Did you ever do that? No. Yeah. Mm, not me. There's some fumes up there. I'm innocent. Uh huh. Completely. Yeah, okay. Just ask my mother. <laughs> my wires are burning. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what's the thing you do in Hendersonville for the for the Christmas for kids? 
I believe it's a barbecue. Oh, the pig fest. The yeah. pig oh, fest. Oh my gosh! Yeah, See, we fest. didn't even talk about the pig fest. Oh, we got to talk about the pig fest. Oh yeah, that's an uh, um, that benefits um, three or four. I think it's four um, organizations in the Hendersonville area, mm-hmm. um, and that is the Hendersonville Parks puts on the pig fest. They do a lot of stuff. Okay. For uh, charity in in that area in Hen- in the Hendersonville area. I mean that Andy Gilly, he is a workhorse and he um, he has a lot of great help. I know Taylor from Live Love Nashville helps them with the pig fest and Yeah. Um there he's got a, a quite the crew um, helping him put the stuff on and we just recently not too long ago had the pig fest and and um they have a big barbecue competition uh, the first night on Friday night. They had a concert and um, awesome. Yeah, the Kentucky Headhunters came out. There was uh, s- several artists out there that helped, and and you know, it's um, it's it's a lot of fun. That's a fun night, you know. Yeah. And, and then you know, Christmas for Kids benefits from that, and but. Hendersonville Parks is really, really, they love Christmas for Kids, and they love, um, there's a lot of organizations in, in Sumner County that they help. Awesome. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Now i got to go to that next year. Yeah, you, you, you're missing out. <laughs> I like good barbecue now. Oh, I'm telling you, you ain't eating good barbecue till you go up there. I can't be a barbecue judge. And it's hard, yeah, you, you can't, it's hard to judge, you know, depending on where you're from, who, what your favorite barbecue is, you mm-hmm. know, but. Um, we have a guy that comes out and cooks for the drivers during Christmas for kids. His name is Andre and he, I'm going to tell you something. When you see a picture of his ribs on Facebook, yeah, it makes your mouth water. If you've ever eaten one of those ribs, I mean, Andre is the bomb.com you know, when it comes, yeah. to, comes to barbecue, but I mean, all of them out there are amazing. I mean, they're good. And the, you know, that alone um, when you smoke like that, that's yeah. a, that's an art. You know? Oh yeah, it is. It really it's is. No joke. But I think the pig fest is going to be even bigger next year. Somebody said. So, well, that'll be fun. I know. I know. I'll have to show. It is up. a lot of fun, and it's it's relaxing and cool. You know, you get to hang out. The weather's not too hot. It's not too cold. Well, I just need to know the exact date that it's going to happen. That way, okay. I can like not eat for two days. Yeah. Oh, exactly. And make room. Yeah, you got to yeah. store up. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm weird. I'm one of those weird guys. I don't like ribs. You know, uh, my husband is that way. He don't like ribs. He says it's, it's they're messy, but but they're messy. There ain't enough meat on the daggum yeah. things. Now, if you give me a mess of barbecue, yeah, and put my sauce in there. And yeah, yeah, there's a lot of that out then there, Then I got a mound of barbecue, and yeah. that's a whole heck of a lot easier yeah, yeah. than that rib. Now, see, I like brisket, but um, brisket is one. I'm from Texas, so yeah. um, I love brisket. And uh, But all of them out there, you know, they cook brisket. They cook, you know, the shredded barbecue, mm-hmm. I mean, all of it. You know, whatever their specialty is, they're, they're bringing it, and they're bringing it, you know, mean and and it'll hurt you when you eat it. When you leave there, you're like, oh, God. <laughs> I've had so much to eat. And, but you can't stop yourself because it's so good. You go to this one, you go to that one, you go to that one. I mean, it's just amazing. You know you what you need to do with the barbecue. Mm-hmm. You got the barbecue. You got the barbecue contest. Yeah. You need to get a bunch of old grandmas around. Yeah. And have a pie making contest. A pie making contest. Woo. Because I ain't nothing hey, that better. Would be fun. We might we might need to call Andy and give him a suggestion. There you go. Because that would be more like a Sunday entertainment. Yeah. You know, exactly. Friday night we have a wild concert, and then Saturday we have mm-hmm. a barbecue, and then Sunday, Grandma comes with her pie. Yep. Because oh. I ain't nothing better than having a big old mess of barbecue. Yeah. And a little bit of sweet. A little bit of sweet. Yeah, you got to have a little bit of sweet with it. Yeah. Got to. And Grandmas are so cute anyway. It's funny to me how competitive they get. They are. <laughs> <laughs> they are. I can't believe I'd have her. She brung a store ball. <laughs> <laughs> I don't judge store bots. I, I do store bots sometimes. Edwards is actually pretty good. Edwards is really good. I like their key lime. I like their lemon meringue and I like their uh, pecan. Yeah. I'm a pecan guy. I love a pecan pie. Pecan. Pecan, 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 whatever, I don't care. I say pecan. Tomato, tomato. Yeah. Potato, potato. Yeah, those things. 
<laughs> so yeah, Man. the pig fest is really fun. And I mean, we're so thankful. Um, you know, Andy and all his crew puts in a lot of hard work to to get that accomplished and and um and um we're very thankful for them. That's awesome. That's a lot of kids we can take shopping. Well, I mean, I just I love how the it's it's not just it's really, I mean, when you look at it, it's really not just you and your crew. No. I mean, this is like a big, huge community. It really is. It belongs to the community. But, you know, it's their, it's the community's kids. Yeah. It's, they're, they're not our kids, you know. Yeah. We're just transport and paperwork and, and but it's, it's the community effort. You know, we have sponsors in the community that help us and, and uh, that talk about us all during the year, you know, yeah. and we could not. After 41 years, it's our 41st year. Mm -hmm. After that many years, and we're still going, we're still um, organized chaos at its finest, you know, <laughs> and we still have chaperones that show and yeah. and kids to help. You know, there's always going to be a kid to help. And as long as uh, we can all pull it together and, and do it as a community effort, yeah. you know. Yeah, well, while I'm there, I'm going to do some, uh, I'll be doing some Facebook lives from down there. Oh, cool. And uh, I'm going to try and do everything I can to help. That's fun. Thanks. I appreciate that. Get the word out. That would be great. I get shouted from the rooftops. Well, yeah. Or, I mean, or a bus top. A you bus top. I'll get you a ladder. You could be up there with the pool noodles. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll call them and see if they'll make the <laughs> Are you chicken? Can you put a ladder up there for I ain't getting up there on them pool noodles. I'll take a nap. <laughs> you could wave them around. Look like one of them oh, I floppy love things. things. Yeah. I don't know what those are, but I, I don't, don't know, know either. I'd like to have a neon green one. Well, we can make that happen. I would love to have one of those. If I could find one, I would. I've never seen it. I got a buddy of mine owns a car lot. I'm sure he's got a direct dial to it oh, somewhere. Who oh, knows? This girl needs to be. Wouldn't that look good in the back of my truck? Hey, there you go. We put a power inverter in that thing. Oh, I say I know somebody can do that too. Yeah, kick it right on. Kick it right on. Won't Let's have go. to worry about it. I could swap it off the bus. I think that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to see you. Yes, you will. Um, the eleventh um, and the twelfth. Yes, sir. Um, I'll be there. And everybody, remember that we the concert's coming no, the twentieth. The twentieth at the Ryman. There's still tickets left. Still We're not going to tell you how many. You got to guess at it. Yeah. So hurry up and get them. Yeah. Go buy them. And help me make no tickets available. Yeah. That would be great. Yep. And guys, y'all help out, please. Yeah. Uh, Christmasforkids.org. Yeah. Up in the very top right, there's donate. There's all the info. There's all kinds of video pictures there is everything that you help out with yeah 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 oh i forgot to tell you about the coats oh yeah the coats can I, can I tell you about the coats yeah you can tell me about the coats so uh every year we give uh every child including our middle school kids have the opportunity to have a coat mm -hmm. um, because a lot of them don't have a coat yeah and so we buy them a coat walmart gives us a deal on the coats and they're twenty dollars Right. So this year I started um, a little fundraiser on my Facebook page and said uh, it'll be warm hugs all winter Okay, is what I'm calling it. And uh, if you donate $20, that buys a coat for a kid. And um, and a lot of times, I mean, they, they show up, you know, you can still wear them yeah. the next year, you know, not just one winter. Maybe they could wear them for two. So, yeah, I mean, the only thing you got to do is buy it maybe just a little bit baggy on. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. So, if you're interested in helping out, you can, at that donate button, you can donate $20 for a coat. That's awesome. And help yeah. out. Help yeah. out. And if you want to come and chaperone, we still have some room for, we have all day chaperones. We have evening chaperones. We have Lebanon chaperones. I've we actually, have Sunday chaperones. I've actually talked to seven people today about that. Oh, so sweet. They called me. That's awesome. So, I mean, if you're going to call me, I'm going to, I'm going to throw yeah. something on you. Yeah. You throw something on you. 
<laughs> put them to work. Make it worth my while. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, in light in their lives. <laughs> yeah. You know, all kinds of fun. Send them on an adventure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Got to. Because it is an adventure. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be fun. Mm. Yeehaw. Yeah. <laughs> Help out the kids, man. Yep. 400. For, for, I just can't believe you do that for 400. Oh, wait till you see it. It's, uh, You're still not going to be able to believe it. Well, I'm programming myself already Yeah. for the control chaos. Yeah. So Let me tell you. a bunch of kids running around. And, and pray for Walmart. Oh, yeah. I don't know what we did. Walmart is so amazing to us. They let us take over their parking lot. They um, let us destroy their store over and over again mm-hmm. every year. You know, they uh, they they are very generous and, and, and community-based also. So yeah. we are very blessed to be there. And they let us take over the place for a little while. Yeah, all of us wicked cool. Yeah. It is. Wicked cool. I, th- I think it's funny because you started saying wicked cool, and I was like, dude, I say that a lot. Wicked cool. Wicked cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Christmas for kids, people. Y'all help out. Yeah. Christmasforkids.org. Go up to the little donate button. Help out. There you scroll down. There's chaperones where you can be a chaperone. All that other good stuff. Mm-hmm. Alicia will hook you up. Yep. Yep, I will. I'll hook you up with a fine time. There you go. Yeah. All right. I appreciate you coming out. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Again. Not a problem. Thanks again. For having again. Me twice. <laughs> Sorry. I'm never going to live this down, nope. folks. Nope. You're, you're, I'm never going to let you forget. <laughs> I have to drive over here. I, I don't got, mind it. I didn't mind it. I thought it was funny. Well, I mean, I got. It happens. I got 20 bucks. I can give you gas money. Hey, no, <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want your 20 bucks. No, you take that 20 bucks and buy a baby a coat. That's hey, that's what I, what I was actually going to do tomorrow. Yeah. Because yeah. I get paid tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be checking. All right. Make sure. There you go. <laughs> All right, we're no, going to get out of here. Appreciate everybody listening. Christmas for kids. Y'all come out to Walmart in Hendersonville, December 11th, between 5 and 9. Check out the buses, make a small donation of five bucks at, at the gate and awesome. come in and check everything out. Bring your kids. I'll be there. A lot of other artists will be there. If you want to know what artists are going to be there, then bring your butt out there and find out. Yeah, you took the website a little bit before. No, I like it better when oh, I tell them to just come so. on out and oh, find yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, see? <laughs> Stick with me now, you see? You see? It's like <laughs> you made me come here twice. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get out of here. Remember, like, share, follow, subscribe. It helps us all out. It really does. And y'all stay tuned. Go to the concert December twentieth. Help out November twentieth. November twentieth. I don't know why I said December twentieth. I don't think you said November. November the twentieth. Yes, yeah, November twentieth. Yeah. Go to the concert November 20th. Help out and come down there December 11th. And we're going to make the wonderful journey and make a lot of kids have a great freaking day. Yeah. It's going to be fun. It's going to be awesome. Yep. All right. We're out of here. See me more later. Bye.